yeah uh, so today we are uh, going to discuss about cyber arc so cyber arc mainly deals with the privileged accounts so privileged accounts what are the privileged accounts why we need to secure the privileged accounts what happens if we do not secure the privileged accounts what are the ways that we can secure the privileged accounts these are all the questions will arise whenever we speak about a privileged account so majorly privilege privilege means highest permissions to enter into some of the systems in respect to uh, uh, it side i am speaking suppose if we speak in general so privilege uh, means let us say if you want to enter uh, you know any of the building premises so at least we need to have appointment otherwise they won't allow us into any of the building so if you speak about organizations okay if you are a employee then only they will allow you into the organization otherwise they won't right so like that way if you want to enter into any of the organization or any of the building or any of the system then you need to have at least you know permission to enter into that area so like that way if we speak about in terms of uh, computers so if you want to access the data in your computer you need to have user id and password so with the user id and password you can log into your system and you can perform your daily activities but if you want to install a software or else if you want to configure something on your system okay then you need to have administrative privileges right so please stop me if i am going fast so that i can reduce my speed or increase my speed okay so hope everyone is okay sir yeah hope everyone is yeah, yeah, everyone understand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so if we want to install a software or configure something on your machine then you should be having administrative privileges at least so without having administrative privileges you won't install any software on your machine right so nowadays uh, as we are working on internet there are multiple hackers in around us so in organizations hackers are there in uh, open internet hackers are there so if they got this credentials they can do anything on the our systems right they can steal our data they can sell it right so for that purpose we need to secure the accounts so first of all let us see uh, in brief what is the privileged accounts what are the types of operating system that we have and where we can find all these privileged accounts so as i told you previously the privileged accounts are the one are the valid credentials these credentials are used to gain access to systems like uh, windows linux network devices databases and so many so these privileged accounts provides uh, elevated accesses to us so mean to say non restrictive permissions so a, as a normal user you want to perform such kind of activities on your machine like installation or uninstallation or configuration changes like that so if you have a privileged account then you can do all these uh, uh, you know activities on that particular system but the non privileged account means say uh, the normal account will not be having those many accesses so in this case who will be using uh, the privileged accounts in organization by default you know system administrators of organization or who will be managing the it technology those guys will be using this privileged accounts so these privileged accounts are available on operating systems let us say if you speak about operating system so windows linux database right there are so many operating systems are there like mac os so on all those systems these privileged accounts will be there and coming to network devices we are having the privileged accounts coming to applications let us say 
banking applications, whatever it may be. So all the applications will be having the privileged accounts. So as the privileged accounts are very important to us and these are very sensitive, so we need to procure, oh, sorry, we need to secure them. So reason here is attacks and our malicious insiders seek and steal them. So attackers who and um, malicious insiders let us say malicious in insiders means the one who are working with us and they are searching for the data in around us so they will be pulling the data from you and selling it to different hackers so malicious insiders means those are the very dangerous people than the hackers who are available in outside right that is the thing about a privileged account so coming to where are all we can find the privileged accounts and what are they? So privileged accounts are the ones that allows administrative permissions to a system, okay, uh, to for provide higher levels of access within the system. So these are called privileged accounts. We can find them in on-premise. Let us say wherever you can find a physical missions, there also you can find these privileged accounts and a cloud environment and coming to hybrid environment like uh, the organization consisting of both on-premise and a cloud infrastructure. So let us say the highest privileged accounts in Linux operating system, that is a root account. So by default, whenever you installing or uh, configuring operating system, by default, a root account will be created. That is, will be the highest privileged accounts. With a root account, you can do any activity on Linux flavored operating systems. And coming to Windows, administrator is a user, the default user, and this administrator will be having highest privileges. And let us say coming to database. So in database, there are administrator accounts like sys and system. These are all the full permissible administrative accounts in DB. Coming to infrastructures account, let us say if we speak about infrastructures, firewalls, switches, routers, load balancers, virtual machines, these are all comes under infrastructure accounts. And coming to embedded accounts, so these embedded accounts are the one which deals with the application accounts and the service accounts. And the cloud assets like the Salesforce, Azure, and AWS. In all these areas, we can find the privileged accounts. So we are speaking about the privileged accounts, privileged accounts, and privileged accounts only. What are they? Where we can find them? All right? These questions which may arise you. So let me clear your doubt now. So whenever we speak about, there are two kinds of accounts will be there on a system. One is interactive account, and other one is non-interactive account. Interactive account, which means that, so those are human accounts. So to access the system, you need to enter user ID and password. Then only the system allows you to see the data inside the system. Otherwise it won't allow you. So those accounts called interactive accounts. And non-interactive accounts means without manually entering the credentials, these can be used in a uh, scripting or application where it can fetch the system data. So those accounts called non-interactive accounts. So we can find these two kinds of accounts in organization. So like that way, we can find the non-interactive accounts, interactive accounts both. Let us discuss more about the privileged accounts, especially uh, interactive and non-interactive both. So let us say there are many types of privileged accounts and we will be facing uh, some of the problems with the privileged accounts on daily basis. Let us say a shared account type. So we are having a shared account. So what are the shared accounts? So let us say if you are working for an organization and you have uh, asked to work on some project, right? Then in that project, there might be some team will be available. So let us say five member team or 10 member team and whatever it may be. 
so if 10 member team is available then they will be having some of the common accounts they will be using all the time to access a system for uh, daily routine activities let us say if they are in production support they will be using some such kind of administrative privileged account for accessing the data okay and then they will be making some modifications based on the business requirement so uh, such kind of accounts we call as shared accounts the shared accounts are shared among uh, team members so where are the shared accounts are using here so shared accounts are using uh, to log in servers and uh, to configure network appliances and to access the database data so these are all the areas we will be using shared accounts and what are all the problems coming with them so as the shared accounts are highly powerful accounts and they are shared among the team and uh, uh, passwords can be memorized all the time and they will be murmuring in the team itself due to that you know they will be no making a note of those passwords in front of their desks for easily maintenance purposes so this problem will be recurring right and also the passwords as multiple people are using the same password for the account they will be keeping that password as simple as that can be remembered easily and that can be uh, you know easy uh, this passwords can be guessed easily as well and uh, the passwords they will be changing very rarely maybe hardly once in a year or two, uh, you know once in three years like that they will be changing so we these are all the problems or anything with the shared accounts and the requirement here to secure them is we need to have a personal accountability of the shared account so one responsible person should be there uh, you know for taking that responsibility accountability of that and uh, we need to have highly secure long term storage and we need to have dual control release mechanism so let us say uh, that dual control here means approvals such kind of approvals are required for getting the passwords so these things and also resetting the password very frequently so let us say if the team is using the passwords today by tomorrow that password need to be changed that kind of permissions we need to provision here and coming to other privileged account that is application account these accounts are widely used in application ids and the scripts batch jobs let us say a batch job means uh, the windows scripting batch scripting where uh, these accounts will be used over there and also we are having a service account scheduled tasks so in all these areas we will be using the application accounts so as these are all using in scripts and uh, scheduled tasks these credentials are hard coded this is one of the problem and they are stored in a clear text format mean to say the password will be visible to any user who are accessing to that file or script that is the reason why these problems will arise with the application account and if they wanted to change the password means that will be very risky to change as these accounts are shared with multiple applications and scripts and due to that that will be very difficult to change the password and these passwords also shared among the team as well okay so the requirement here to secure them is we need to have a automatic mechanism to rotate the password periodically and these passwords should be hidden from the developers and the staff engineers so to make that one hidden I mean to say we need to encode them and while you are using the password then we need to decode them as well so then only the passwords will be hidden right so next type of privileged account is elevated personal accounts these are the interactive accounts so these accounts are uh, uh, widely used in cloud providers servers network appliances and databases these elevated personal accounts are more powerful than the normal accounts 
So that is the reason why we need to maintain these accounts for the automatic management password process. And also we need to have a dual control mechanism where to use that account, we need to have a approvals for using that. So these are all the types of privileged accounts and the problems arise with them. So hope everyone is good till this point. So let me continue with the next slide. If you have any doubts, please let me know. Okay, I take it to S. Yes. Yes, is it clear, sir? No doubts. Yeah. So why why do we need a privileged account management? Okay, because there are increased threats. So if you see majorly in online majority of the threats are happening so nowadays you know they are calling to our mobile and they will they are asking for otps and they will be sending uh, some urls to our mobile and asking us to click on them so these are all the uh, online threats are happening by the hackers nowadays and they are costly insider fraud also happening so there are some people insiders they will be working for others in the organization and they will be stealing the data and sharing the data to other people. So insiders are very dangerous than the external hackers. Okay. And compliance thing, we need to maintain the compliance, account compliance. So we should have, uh, you know, tougher regulations we need to implement. And also we need to focus on the risk and this, we need to provision stronger governance for these things and that problems created by privileged accounts they are most powerful accounts in the organization as the privileged accounts having a sensitive access access to sensitive information and the passwords are very rarely changed and these passwords are known to many people in the organization and also there is no individual accountability uh, for sending some notes to the people who are using all these accounts. That's the reason why we need to maintain the privileged accounts management. Next thing is, what is the PIM-PAM solution? PIM abbreviates, you know, privileged identity manager and PAM means privileged account manager. So the solution provided by CyberArk here is PIM-PAM solution. Okay, we call that one as a PASS, that is Privileged Account Security. So this PASS solution is designed to discover the accounts are available in organization and to secure them in a such a way that the password will be rotated and at each and every access and rotate the passwords, controlling the access, let us say, for which account what type of access should be given to the user. Those kind of controlling also we can provide in the cyber arc. So these accounts are, privileged accounts are available throughout the environment, enterprise IT environment. That's the reason why we are going with the PaaS solution from the cyber arc. So let us say, how can, we say that any organization having how many privileged accounts? Let us assume that some X organization having 100 employees in them, then you know there might be a chance of having 200 to 300 privileged accounts over there. So here is the thumb rule to calculate the privileged accounts in any organization. So let us assume here is you know privileged accounts are the two or three times more than the number of employees or user in an organization so here it is telling that there the privileged accounts are twice or thrice the employee count in the organization so for an example if we take 5000 employees are there in abc organization then there might be having chances of you know 10,000 to 15,000 privileged accounts over there. So uh, you can ask me a question here. 
so if there are 100 employees in organization how the privileged accounts will be uh, 200 or 300 like that right so whenever you joining an organization they will be creating a user id and a password to access the teams and the mail server right after joining into organization they will be creating some uh, project specific credentials also for you so in that case there will be one more privileged account for you to uh, use that account right so like that way different projects will be having multiple uh, privileged accounts associated with the employee so in an average if you speak the privileged account count will be twice or thrice to the employee count in any of the organization got it yeah moving to next slide what is CyberArk privileged account security solution? So here, privileged identity manager or privileged access manager solution by CyberArk is called a privileged account security. So the account security is divided into three parts, like real-time threat detection, proactive controls, and shared technology platform. So if we move further into this, uh, three layers of uh, cyber pass solution so we can find very more security layers over here let us say here there is a protect layer detect layer and respond layer is available so whatever the layer is available down right that is the protect layer and the second is detect layer that is a proactive control layer next respond layer is real time threat detection layer so by using this cyber course right so we will be dealing with all these three layers of a pass solution so in the shared technology platform we will be able to manage the account through web management interface okay and also there are master policies implemented on each and every account and there is a discovery engine where it will be used to fetch the accounts from the systems which we are having access to and we are having a digital vault where it will be using for storing the passwords in organization in a secure manner that is the shared technology platform coming to proactive controls so we are having enterprise password vault this will be giving a user uh, the graphical user interface experience to access the account and manage the accounts and there is a ssh key manager so where the ssh key manager will be used to maintain the ssh keys public and private keys especially speaking here and coming to privileged session manager this is the component of cyber which will be helpful for record the session and audit the session and isolate the session. These three features will be coming with the privileged session manager. And the application identity manager, uh, that is a DAP solution called Conjure, and EPM, endpoint privileged manager. And the next thing is OPM, on demand privileged manager. So these the three are, uh, you know, second level of CyberArk uh, uh, components. So that will give more security and more feasibility to applications where they can fetch the credentials next thing is real-time threat detection so here we are having privileged threat analysis pta so this will be giving uh, the reports to the end user or reports to the administrator what are all the accounts used and where all them used and what were the threats were happened to those accounts uh, these kind of uh, reports it will be generated and uh, shared with us automatically okay coming to next we are speaking about core components of cyber arc right so prior going to this uh, components of cyber arc i would like to inform so what are all the prerequisites for cyber arc and what we need to require so cyber arc so what are the prerequisite for this 
so here when i speak about prerequisites you should have basic system knowledge so it might be either window system or linux system or database system okay whatever it may be you should have basic system knowledge so at least you should know how to access the system what are all the things are required to access the system so like uh, if you want to access a window system whenever it is uh, locked or it is logged off you need to log on into the system right you need to provide a username and password so by that way you can access the system so window system you need to have linux system knowledge and databases some etc so these are all the system knowledge you need to have and coming to uh, other prerequisites that is network overview so you need to have network knowledge as well like port what are all the ports are required for doing a remote desktop connection so what is the port is required to access a linux system via putty okay what is the port is required to access a database okay so those are all the things are required and uh, this thing networking overview can be available in youtube uh, with the ccna all right networking uh, basics you can learn from there that will be helpful for you throughout the course so ports are required so what are the windows ports linux ports database ports basic information is enough actually we don't want to dig more and more into it okay so only the basic information is enough for learning this course and coming to other prerequisites what is switch what is router so those all things are required okay so this is the basic requirement from you guys i am expecting so if you have this knowledge you know definitely you will be able to rock in cyber arc okay without this also you can enter into cyber arc but i need a commitment uh, parallelly you need to learn these things as well so in that case that will be very easy for you to understand and to cope up uh, with the things in future so coming to core components of cyber arc so we deal with the majorly five components over here so why these components are required i will show you now a demo so here i am working on a virtual machine so to work the cyber arc we need to have some servers all need to be run parallelly okay as this is my lab environment you know all these uh, were installed in a virtual mission but if you are working in organization you will be getting a separate server for each and every component over there so as i told you there are some four components like epv that is enterprise password vault so enterprise password vault this is the component which will help us to proactively protect the privileged account accesses using a password so so it will be used to uh, secure the privileged account in cyber arc so once you save this password in cyber arc none of the users will be having access to it until unless the administrative of that particular account will give access to it in a cyber arc system then only the user will be getting access also there will be it will be used for detecting accounts securing accounts and rotating the passwords automatically also happened by using a enterprise password vault we call that one as epv in short form next thing is privileged session manager uh, this privileged session manager enables the organization to isolate monitoring and recording and controlling the privileged session on a critical systems the critical systems are like you know unix windows databases hypervisors network devices and cloud systems as well we can include and uh, this solution acts as a jump server so do you know what is jump server so let us assume if you are not having direct access to one of the server from your desktop then you know there will be a bypassing servers in between 
uh, the server which you want to log in and from the your desktop. So that is called a jump server. So to access the targeted server, you know, first of all, you need to log into a mission which is having accessible to you. And from there, you can establish a session to, uh, you know, accessing the desired server which you want. That is called a jump server. So this privilege session manager also acts as a jump server and provides a single access control point for preventing the malware okay by jumping into the target server so let us say uh, if you wanted to connect uh, you know server a b c d from your desktop then it is not allowing to direct access from there so in that case a jump server will be used some uh, xyz user will be used and then from xyz server you will be establishing a session to abcd server so in cyber arc the similar way the session will be established and the end user also don't know how the session is establishing firstly to which server it got connected and where it went to that user also don't know so that kind of security will be provided in cyber arc also along with that it will also provide us the keystroke uh, monitoring as well. Also, we will be able to see the live sessions, whatever the end user is doing. So that capability also available here. Next, coming to Cyber Central Policy Manager, we call that one as CPM. So the Central Policy Manager is used to automate the account passwords. Okay. Let us say if you speak about a password. So if you want to access a system, you should have a password. So organization having their own policies right in uh, setting up the passwords. So they will tell you at least two capital letters, three small letters should be there, four numericals should be there, and two special characters should be there. And including all, we should have a 16 character length password. So you should have a 16 character length password along with that one, all the criteria should be fulfilled. Then only you will be able to set the password and access the system. So if you are setting such kind of, uh, um, you know, secure password, then that will be difficult to uh, remember the things. If you are changing the password every weekly or monthly, that will be sure. So that is the reason why we are having a central policy manager in CyberArk. This will be managing the passwords automatically and it will change the password automatically whenever there is a time to change. And it will store the password in Vault. And uh, that same password will be updated in the target system as well. Then only we will be able to connect. So the roles of a central policy manager is it can change the password and verify the password and reconcile the password, which we don't have access to change. And also, if you don't have direct access to server, it can bypass the account with the other user's password as well. So these are all the uh, things can be managed in CyberArk. Coming to PVWA, that is Password Vault Web Access. This is the component will provide us the web interface to manage the policies. So, and also we can do configurational changes over here and also can do account management and the platform management. All these things can be performed here in privileged uh, password vault web access. In short, we can call that as PVWA. Okay, next thing is, Privileged is session manager proxy. We call that one as PSMP. So PSMP also very similar to PSM, that is privileged session manager, but this will be implemented on a Unix operating system. And rest of the components, right, uh, uh, until we spoke, all those components will be installed and configured on a Windows operating system, but only uh, PSMP will be configured in Linux environment. This also acts as a jump server to the 
linux operating system accounts so as uh, like very similar to psm this will also provides a recordings that is a text recording feature will be available over here so as the end users let us say linux administrators are you know using a putty that is a native client connectivity to establish a target system connection then they are most familiar with the putty so we we can also use the putty to establish a target system connection without entering the password of a target system this can be achieved with the help of cyberarc now and coming to sssh key manager in sssh key manager okay it protects the privileged accounts access using a sssh key pair by securing private keys and public keys and a paid controlling access to private keys and uh, that will be saved in a target system public keys will be in system and the private key will be with us so in cyber arc, private keys will be stored in vault and the public key will be updated in target system like that way these sss keys also will be used over here so hope you are all good till this point i am showing you the live system how you will be accessing cyber arc and other stuff and uh, after this uh, you know slide so here we are always you know speaking about vault enterprise vault digital vault all these vault terms we are used to pronounce here so what is vault what is a secure vault why we are calling this a secure vault how the vault name comes over here okay so uh, in general if you speak about locker do you guys know about locker in bank yes vijay okay yeah many of us knows about the locker right in a bank how it will work first of all if you want to open a locker account so you need to provide all your details with the manager right so you identity proof address proof and purpose of opening locker account what is the size of locker you want okay all the information you need to provide there once the details are very verified the branch manager will be opening a locker account to you and he will you a key locker key also he will share a locker key also and then whenever you enter into a bank if you wanted to store your things let us say any document or ornaments or whatever it may be then again you need to approach bank manager saying that please open the locker number so that i wanted to store my things over there so why he need to ask the branch manager because the master key will be with the branch manager and the dependent associated key will be with us so if you put both the keys then only the locker will be opened so like this way branch manager will come along with you and he opens the locker and he went up from there after that you open the locker with your key and uh, you will be storing all your things and ornaments over there and locking it again and while you are going out you will be informing manager stating that please lock the locker so by this way the locker will be secure right and it cannot be stealed so in similar way the digital vault vault uh, the term come from banking technology so vault is also very similar to locker in a bank that's the reason why we are calling this one as a secure vault or secure digital vault so in this vault we are having seven layers of a digital vault so what are all the layers are available here so if you speak the vault like you know authentication the first layer is authentication what is authentication so authentication means if you want to access 
is a system or a locker in a bank at least you need to have a key user id and password right like that way if you want to access the vault data you should have the user id and password so the user id password can be internal to cyberarc or it may be active directory or it may be radius or it may be azure whatever it may be that system should be having valid credentials to access your vault data and then it is having a firewalls as well so if you see the firewall every every system will be having a firewalls as the vault is implemented on windows system so windows having its own firewall right on top of that windows firewall our cyber arc vault will be building its own firewall okay and then it will be disabling all the functionalities like remote desktop functionality file sharing functionality printer sharing functionality and other stuffs which are not required for the vault all those things will be blocked so only 1858 port number 1858 will be opened to access the vault apart from the port number 1858 everything will be blocked so our cyber arc will be communicating with the component servers with the port number 1858 so this is the one of the important thing you need to remember next thing is segregation of duties other layer is segregation of duties so what is this why it will be used so let us assume um, in an organization if there is a member of five teams five member is available team of five members are available each team member having different different duties right in the similar fashion in cyber arc also we are having different roles like administrators auditors users and safe managers so each and every user will be having separate permissions and if you want to do administrative activities on system you should have administrative privileges on cyber arc side then only you can do that otherwise it cannot be happened next thing is other layer comprehensive monitoring so comprehensive monitoring this will be uh, applicable to monitor the activity on that particular system so this can be achieved okay with the help of a component that is a privileged session manager where all the sessions uh, you know those will be recorded and monitored and the next thing is next layer that is tamper proof auditability okay whatever the recordings which are stored in vault server right those are all very secure and they cannot be tampered even administrator also won't be able to delete them so these uh, you know logs or recordings will be there till a year or two years or three years based on the configuration that you have mentioned over there so till that point of time these auditings will be available no one can be deleted them till that period will end okay next thing is hierarchical encryption other other cyber arc layer so what is hierarchical encryption so the encryption will be happened you know level by level so in cyber arc there are multiple encryption levels are there so we are having some of the keys like master keys operator keys safe keys object keys sub object key like that these are all the internal to cyber arc we can't see anything what is there in that okay so by using master key okay objects will be encrypted okay safes safes will be encrypted by using safe key object will be encrypted by using object key sub object will be encrypted so if you wanted to access the sub object then you should have all the keys associated with that one then only you can retrieve the password of the target system or use the password of a target system okay 
this is the hierarchical encryption will be available in cyberarc the last feature and important feature is that is session encryption so session encryption so in cyberarc the sessions also encrypted so uh, the data which is storing in cyberarc means that is encrypted encrypted means that is okay but if there is a live session is happening if that one also need to be encrypted means there should be a lot of technology involved over there so here session encryption also happened not only the transit data it will also secures uh, uh, the stable data as well in organization so the encryption will be happened with the rsa uh, keys as well as uh, with the ssh keys and other stuffs okay so these are all the seven layers of cyber arc okay so how we will be accessing the directory data so for that one we are having the pwa password vault web access so by using this uh, password vault web access the end user can be able to access the vault data which are stored in cyber arc so this is the web management interface you will be logging into the vault to get the vault data so let me show you the thing in real time so whenever user enters uh, uh, the url so it will be landing a page here like this so based on the authentication type that you are having you will be able to access the vault data so I can use either CyberArk authentication or LDAP authentication, both the authentication types which were configured on this system right now. So whenever I use CyberArk authentication, I can log in with the credentials which are local to CyberArk. So I am putting the administrative credentials, administrator, and the password I am putting over here once you enter the credentials right it will be landing into a home page where you can see accounts view page so here these accounts will be fetched based on the accesses which the user is having to okay so uh, whenever you are want to see that accounts right you, you just click on this account it will be showing all right this is the account temp test dummy two account okay this is the dummy two account so i have created a dummy account here so this account was uh, created in active directory and i have onboarded that into cyber so this account is a status is a compliance so the password was last changed in 46 days back and the password is never verified so you can see all the details about the account especially so like this way, the PWA will be used for uh, accessing the vault data. So whatever the accounts which I am shown over here, right? These are all the data which is accessible to this particular user administrator. Okay. Next thing, coming to shared technology platform. The shared technology platform here, you know, you can see the accounts which are all available to this particular user so if you want to see full account details over here then you know you need to click on this additional details then you know it will be landing a classic interface over here so once it is the page is loaded if you click on this search button empty search right whenever you hit on empty search it will be listing all the accounts which are having access to this particular user administrator if you see that in the down it is showing you know displaying accounts 1 to 25 of 39 so there are total 39 accounts are available on this server out of 39 25 are in this page and if you want to see more accounts click on next page so that each and every account will be available to you okay so this is the pwa page and we can access the data over here let us assume if you want to see the password of this pu windows account 
okay so if you want to see the password of this account there is option like show password copy password right so whenever you click on show password so it will be asking you a reason to enter why you need a password of this account so i am just putting a note over here demo purpose whenever you hit uh, enter the reason and then click on ok it will show the password on screen see here you are able to see the password so what insiders will do now insiders you know uh, will uh, copy the password right and they will be making note of it and then they will be making a note of all the data okay what is the platform what is the user id what is the other stuff like that and they will be selling that this data to hackers sectional hackers so that what the hackers will do by using this credential okay username pu windows 1 and the password so they will be able to access the systems without our permission so that is the reason why insiders are most dangerous than the external hackers so to maintain this password you know changing each and every day so we are having the central policy manager right so that will be changing the password automatically so if you wanted to change the password and update it over the target system you need to click on change button okay you if you choose the first option automatically the password will be changed in some time let us say in less in one minute the password will be changed if you see here account is scheduled for immediate change so after a minute the password will be changed automatically so let me refresh this page again so like that way still uh, the thing is not went so after that the timestamp will be updated over here last modified by when at what time the password is modified today it will show the date and everything so 15th february right so 15th february date it will show over here so let me refresh this page again so it is not yet changed it's taking time to change the password so we need to wait and if you want to see the activities what are all the things are happening just to click on activities and see at what time the password change was uh, triggered 605 so there is two minutes over still the password did not change so let us see what is happening so maybe it is taking some bit more time it will be changed in between one minute to five minutes of time so do anyone has any questions please let me know till the password change So we can establish the session to target system as well. Let us assume uh, if you wanted to establish a session to target system, okay, how you will be establishing. So in general, what you will do, remote desktop connection, right? You will be opening a RDP, remote desktop, and then you will be entering the IP address of that particular system, okay, and then providing a the credentials so click on connect button All right after that you will be choosing the credentials so the domain name after that your credentials and then password so once you put credentials over here right it will be establishing a connection to target system see the credentials were worked and i am able to access the windows server 2012 okay this is the manual process here you need to remember username you need to remember the password and then you need to click on uh, you know okay button then only it is established a session to target system right 
so without interaction if a user wanted to establish a session so there is a provision in cyberr that the user can be access the target system by clicking on connect button which is available over here seems there is some problem with this account that the reason why it is uh, taking some bit more time so let us choose other account and let's see uh, whether we are able to access the system or not so i'm just so i'm just using uh, a demo uh, domain one or two or three whatever it may be so let me choose demo domain one so whenever i open the properties over here the password last changed on 6th february so whenever i click on connect button see i am putting the reason for demo purpose and you want to enter the server uh, to which server you wanted to connect so either drop down button you can select or else you can enter the server name or ip address whenever you click on ok a remote desktop file will be downloaded so once the file is downloaded whenever you hit on open okay whenever you hit on open a remote desktop connection will be opened so here it is showing remote desktop connection to some different server i have chosen the server ip address ending with 20 but here it is showing some different server whenever i hit on connect button see observe here it won't ask anything it won't ask any credentials automatically it fill the credentials over here and it will establish a connection to target system automatically so by this time whenever it is entering the credentials right it is showing you are being recorded so the session will be recorded and this will be monitored as well so this recording will be available with the uh, cyber arc uh, application you know till one year time so if you want to increase the time you can increase all those things as well so that is a kind of uh, you know in-depth uh, thing about cyber arc but here we are only focusing about cyber arc establishing to connection to target system so the connection will be established in a while yes mr rushikesh ramakrishna venkata chalam vijay do you have any doubts please let me know uh, vijay i am um, unable to hear you maybe you are speaking but your voice is not coming here ramakrishna rushikesh please unmute yourself and uh, speak we are at the end of uh, our demo session okay just wanted to know if you have any doubts so that uh, you know after clearing your doubts we can wrap up the session so uh, 192.168216 16 is our mission right no no 16 is the psm mission privilege session manager oh. but the target server ip address is 20 20 okay. so user will be connecting to target server 20 but uh, let us say if a user is about to hack the server he will be seeing uh, the ip address as 16 only but he will be concentrating on hacking 16 server but as the session is uh, you know encrypted okay he won't mm -hmm. be able to hack that system as well okay and uh, let me show you the other thing as well so i am having some linux servers also with me so if i establish a session with the linux server let uh, let me show you that um mm -hmm. SSH. Yes, let me search with SSH. Yeah, if you see here, um, SSH service 2, this is the account which is there on Linux server. So if I click on connect button, still, you know, uh, the server IP address, please remember, 
this is 18 ending with i want to connect a linux server ending with 18 but whenever you click on connect button a uh, reason you need to enter after that a rdp file will be downloaded here and once you hit on that rdp file okay it will be opening a remote desktop session and here it is showing 16 if you see my i am connecting to 18 server but still it is showing 16 only okay. whenever i hit and connect initially you know it will establish a connection to psm server by using a remote desktop connection after that from psm server it will be establishing a putty session to connect a linux system see you are being recorded in this time a putty session is opened after that it will be entering the user id and it will be entering the password in background finally you are able to access the linux server if you see the host name see host name is ready.com and if you see ip address it is showing one second let me scroll up it will show the ip address over here yeah if you see this ip address is dot 18 yes right like this way session will be uh, you know secured and that will be established automatically and also the password change if you want to see the password change click on that you know automatically the password will be changed in some time so uh, to uh, achieve this one right we need to have the cpm pwa psm all the component server should be working fine so previously if you see there was a delay in changing the password that might be due to service issue or component issue so we need to troubleshoot that one so to troubleshoot that one you will be logging into server and then you will be checking the service status whether the service is running or not so then only you will be able to finalize whether the server is healthy or not. So let us open services and the associated services you need to check for the CyberArk central policy manager. So password manager service is running. Yeah, let us see whether the password got changed or not. Refresh the password. See here, still the account is scheduled for immediate change. We need to wait for a time so it will take uh, definitely some time to change the password yeah so any other doubts guys so actually i joined late so could you please brief about the components in yeah definitely thank you And where we can observe the uh, monitoring jobs? Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. For the monitoring, also, um, we are having uh, the auditor roles we need to provision to the user. Yes, so by okay. using that, uh, yeah, by using that auditor role, the user will be able to see the monitoring. So I will show you this monitoring now. Um. So. So I am accessing the url provide the credentials auditor and his password whenever you put the credentials you know your user will be logged in here auditor user so basically this is the cyber inbuilt user auditor i put over here but in real time might be vijay has provisioned auditor roles ramakrishna or hrushikesh Anyone can provision an auditor role. That's the reason why they will be able to see the sessions. So I just clicked on monitoring over here. If you want to see the live sessions which are happening currently, so there is a button here, live sessions, right? So if you click on here, see administrator, two sessions were established. One is Linux session by using the SSS service to account. And uh, other one is RDP session with the demo domain account. So if you want to see the live session, what is happening? So there is one I symbol here, right? Monitor live session. Whenever you hit on this one, so again, RDP file will be downloaded. 
okay whenever you enter that uh, file open that file uh, whatever the sessions whatever the activity which is doing by administrator user on that particular sss service one to account that will be captured let us see that you are being monitored see previously it was given that you are being recorded now it told you are being monitored right so now i am just putting this one aside and again i am opening the other session this one where it went yeah see currently uh, i am typing who am i uh, you are seeing right the right hand side also it is typing automatically who am i maybe the font size is very small here that's the reason why you are unable to see yes but, we observed mm -hmm. yeah who am i whenever i hit on enter here in left hand side so it will show sss service to the same thing is monitored over here so this is the monitor window okay and this is the live window got it yes yes yeah so this is the monitoring and coming to rushikesh uh, doubt you know let me open the cyber arc components yeah these are all the core components of cyber arc which will be delivered throughout the session okay upcoming so enterprise password vault privileged session manager central policy manager privileged session manager proxy okay password vault web access these are all the components and the definitions of them so this enterprise password vault will be used to monitor sorry not monitoring uh, to securing the accounts and automatically managing the passwords of them and the privilege session manager which will be used to monitoring recording and isolating of the accounts central policy manager this component is specifically used to password rotational purposes and a password vault web access this will give the end user for the uh, web interface where end users can access the cyber arc vault data and they will be able to manage it and the next thing is privileged session manager proxy this is also one of the component in cyber arc this is also very similar to psm but privileged session manager proxy will be used to establish sessions or monitor the sessions on linux flavored operating systems okay yeah so so this is all about uh, cyber arc so moving forward you know uh, we will be learning more 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 things about these are all core components of cyber arc starting from installation for doing the installation we need to have some prerequisites so what are the prerequisites how you can achieve them how to install them where to configure them how can we do administration okay all these topics will be covered so are we doing these labs on cloud or like we are doing it on usually local... usually uh, we'll be doing these things on you know local mission okay so you will be provisioned with a remote desktop connectivity by using any desk and from there you can do practice okay so you will be having practical sessions and the theoretical sessions both so majorly in cyber arc means there will be lot in practical theoretical also will be there but uh, that is less in part so if you do more practice definitely you know you will be achieving more so what kind of job role we uh, do we get after uh, we finish with this course yeah so as i told you there are uh, four to five types of roles are available here um mm -hmm. so let us assume they will be looking for implementation expert 
okay okay implementation experts means in this uh, in this area uh, so you will be more concentrating on configuring the servers okay mm -hmm. installation thing majorly so you should work for a client where you need to implement all the components and uh, deliver the system to client so after that bau team business as usual let us say production support team will come into the picture mm -hmm. yeah the uh, next role is uh, so let us say administrator activities they will be asked to so if uh, you are looking for that role means definitely you should be aware of uh, um, both the systems like operating system area you will be more focused and also the cyber arc area also you will be more focused so in this case you will be probably dealing with the issues arising with the uh, accounts and the target systems and the network devices and other stuffs okay and uh, coming to other stuff like upgradation so where that is also very similar to installation area so but you will be doing upgradation from one version to other version of cyber arc so let us say currently in the market uh, we are having version 13.0 so majority mm -hmm. majority of the organizations are now using version 11.3 and above okay the previous versions are gone so cyberarc is not providing any support with, with the previous versions so as the end of life cycle will be there for each and every version that is the 3 years from the uh, date they were released so uh, if 13.0 version released very recently that will be valid for 3 years from now after 3 years this version will be updated. so definitely the cost should be under this project so in that case you will be appointed as upgrade engineer and you will be doing all the upgrade activity in that particular organization with the help of cyber arc professional services team help so on each uh on each on each installation activity or upgradation activity and if you want to do any of the major configurational changes on that particular system definitely you will be consulting cyber arc professional services team so that is not a free of cost you know definitely uh you should uh pay for the pay for it right yeah so if you don't have any doubts we can wrap up the session for today thank you yes sir yeah uh, initially um, you know not sure what the issue happened i was uh, not able to hear, hear you guys i did not take uh, your you know uh, uh, roles and responsibilities and about yourself kind of thing no problem <laughs> uh, yeah currently working in i am domain only but uh, like don't have any specific knowledge about the tools like cyber arc cell point okay closely working with the exchange and office 360 okay 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 yeah. no problem so what about the technology you worked on till now uh, you know uh, or you are about to work on this you know um, that is not a matter uh, because this tool is a very independent to each and every technology so one should have basic system knowledge is enough for learning this course mm -hmm. how is the job market scope for this okay so always let us say if you look if you are looking for a job whenever you put a resume based on your experience definitely it will be doubled the package right in a market Okay. respect of any technology so when you speak about this uh, uh, privileged account management tools there are multiple tools are available okay whenever you take about the security then definitely you can demand 
3x or 4x sometimes 5x also mm-hmm. based on your experience right yeah there is a market it is never ending and that too based on your performance again how you right. deliver in the interview that is counts so are we taking any saml like other things like the protocols in this course mm, no we i will teach you how to do those integrations like uh, um ldap integration redis integration saml integration okay and other stuffs okay but uh, as the systems will not support all these things uh, right we won't be able to do in our lab environment but the information is more suffice to work in real time environment yeah because uh, if we go for the job like they are asking for these things this mm-hmm. kind of integration they are expecting yeah so what are the configurations if you wanted to do you know will be explaining in the session so the same thing uh, you can convey to them so uh, in real time also you will be implementing the same way there won't be any difference so once you took the uh, session from here right you will mm-hmm. be getting a knowledge of uh, you know 3 plus years of experience guy on cyber arc in this one month of duration okay okay got it yeah and uh, in your resume if you put 3 years into cyber arc right Uh, they won't be asking more and more into integration parts because uh, in 3 years hardly you might be worked on two or three projects not not more than that so that's the reason why even um, the organization people interviewers also want to come uh, you know consider that as a high high level profile of yours so they will be dealing with the, some kind of a basic and advanced topics only Okay, but okay. i will be teaching all the topics those are helpful to you to crack okay. the interview in advanced level as well uh one more thing like uh, along with the cyber do we require to do the cell point or like savvy or some kind of tools that is not at all required but if you have that uh, technology in your hand means that is a added advantage but um, okay. coming to the cell point right Mm-hmm. um so majority of active directory aggregations and uh, uh, provisioning user provisionings and uh, um, granting accesses that will be done on sale point only so if you have that knowledge that can be added advantage here some of the organization they are using sale point uh, as their identity and the granting accesses accordingly aggregations and other stuff they are doing Hmm. but that is not a mandatory okay okay fine thank you yeah okay guys thanks for your time